As I told you a few weeks ago that you are not, doesn't mean you're not saved if you're battling with depression. I also encouraged you to go to the doctor if you are battling with depression. Going to the doctor about depression is no different than going to the doctor about an illness or injury that you might have received. So I think it's important that we get the help that we need that has been made available to us. Some of the symptoms of depression, many people battle with depression and doesn't know the symptoms or um, refuse to admit that they have these symptoms. And some of these symptoms that you may have not necessarily mean you're battling with depression, but these are just signs of depression that could lead to even clinical depression. Okay? Uh, trouble concentrating, remembering details, and making decisions. Fatigue. Feelings of guilt, worthlessness, and helplessness. Insomnia. Early morning wakefulness or sleeping too much. Irritability. Restlessness. A loss of interest in things that was once pleasurable. Overeating or appetite loss. They even said aches, pains, headaches, or cramps that won't go away could be symptoms of depression. Digestive problems that don't get better even with treatment. Persistent sadness or anxiousness or empty, empty feelings. Suicidal thoughts or attempts. Now this comes from a very reputable website, WebMD is where I received that information from. But I want to give you some scriptures real quick, and then I'm gonna do something different. I wanna give you one scripture right now that I think that if you begin to cling to this scripture, as you battle with the situation that you're battling with, I believe you begin to, to, to allow it to um, uh, permeate, permeate within you, and you begin to live it out you'll begin to see things differently and life will begin to get better. I want to announce to the enemy right now that you will live and not die. Amen. Give God glory right there. You will live and you will not die and you will declare the glory of the Lord. So the enemy's purpose is to steal, kill, and to destroy you by all means necessary. But God's plan for your life is to give you life and have it more abundantly. The enemy's attempt is to cause all type of havoc to happen in your life. To get you to the point to where you look at life as not being worth living. Where God allows the situations that you go through build you and make you a better person and make you stronger. It's all about how you look at things. And it's all about how you deal with it. One of the things that will really get you into a place of depression, I believe, is a place, uh, is having a mindset of, of, of uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, shoot, Lord, I just had it. Holy Ghost, bring it back to me. Glory to God. Entitlement, that's it. You have an entitlement spirit. And the entitlement spirit says that you deserve stuff. You deserve for it to happen. You deserve for it to be this way. And you, you, you expect for it to be that way. And when it's not happening the way that you expect it to happen, you become depressed and you begin to shove people away. And you begin to draw a further away from God, as Nisha was saying. Your focus has become unclear now. And so you have entered into a place of depression. And that's what the enemy desires for you in your life is to get you to a place where you think you deserve everything and everybody should celebrate you and everybody should do stuff for you and you should have everything that you see everybody else have and in reality you ought to be thankful for what you already have and give God glory for what he's going to bring into your life. Amen. That leads to this scripture real quick where it says in Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, in every situation, by prayer, by petition, with thanksgiving, 
Present your request, make your request known unto God. Another verse I love is Isaiah chapter 41, where it says, so do not fear for I am with you. Somebody say, God is with me. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand, says God. And then Philippians 4 and 8 says, finally, brothers and sisters, this is where you need to change your thought process. You've been thinking the wrong way. And your thoughts has caused you to feel a certain way about yourself or feel a certain way about life and feel a certain way about your relationship with God. Negative thinking produces ne- negative uh, thinking produces ne- negative habits. You understand? So Philippians 4 and 8 says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure. Whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent of praiseworthy, think on such things. Think on the right stuff. Think on the right things. Change the way you think. Change the way you look about life at life and begin to just thank God for having life. You understand me? Stop pursuing things so much to where when you don't get the things, it causes you to be depressed. Pursue the king of kings and the king of things. You understand what I'm saying? Pursue after him. Fall in the presence of God. Stretch out in the presence of God. Lay prostrate before him and tell God to feel you and don't move until you feel a tangible touch of the Holy Ghost until your mind is changed, your life is changed, your thought is changed, and your vision has changed. Give him praise and glory. You will live and not die. You will declare the glory of the Lord, man. I'm telling you, the word of God declares in Matthew chapter 11, 28. Come unto me, all ye that weary and burdened and heavy laden. I'll give you rest. I'll give you rest. I'll give you what? Rest. See, what you fail to understand and may not even realize just because you sleep at night doesn't mean you're resting. <laughs> Y'all hear me? Just because you might be in realm four doesn't mean you're resting. Glory to God. There's still going to be things tormenting your mind. Some people have nightmares. Some people uh, have demonic tor- uh, 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 demons tormenting their mind about certain things and the things they're battling with in life, the loss of loved ones. And even if the loss has happened years ago, they are still battling with trying to overcome that loss. And the enemy will use that thing to keep that person down and down bound come out by the power of the Holy Ghost come unto me all your labor and heavy laden I'll give you rest I picture Christ like this take my yoke upon you and learn of me he said learn of me learn of me for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light God does not want you to be bound God doesn't want you to be so bound or bound at all, but really don't want you to be bound to the point of where you feel like giving up on life. I come against the spirit of suicide by the power of the Holy Ghost. (laughs) Pastor know what he's talking about. And many of you may say to yourself, that would never be me. That would never happen to me. I would never have thoughts of suicide. Don't, 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 don't get, don't think that the enemy is not cunning to the point of where he'll get you all by yourself and cause things to happen to get you to the place of hopelessness to the point of where you'll think about committing suicide. This is why the Bible says to cast down every thought and every imagination and everything that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. Y'all hear me? Bring it under captivity to what the presence of God wants to do in your life and bring, bring it under captivity of the word of God. Know the word of God for yourself. Know what the word of God says. Stop trying to come out of this on your own. Ask God to help you and the aid of the Holy Spirit to come alongside of you and to direct your path. 
The, the Bible says that the word of the Lord is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. It will show you how to get out. It will give you encouragement in dark time, dark, dark places. It will be a light for you. It will give you strength. It will encourage you. Don't negate the word of God. Don't push it aside. When those feelings of depression and anxiety come over your life, cling to that word and ask the Holy Spirit to show you something in the law of God. Give you a revelation that will help you and sustain you for that moment in time until God fully delivers you. Fight your way through this thing. Go fight, fight, glory to God. Roll up your spiritual sleeves and go into spiritual warfare and begin to bind the devil and overcome that spirit. Glory to God. I'm telling you, you're stronger than you think you are. You have more power than you think you do. You have more potential, glory to God, than what you give yourself credit for. God loves you and desires to deliver you. Give him praise and glory in the house. For 30 seconds, y'all, until you feel something shake. Oh, glory to God. Oh, somebody needs your story. Somebody needs your testimony. Somebody needs you. Glory to God. Don't give up on life. Live and not die. <laughs> Y'all can be seated. Live and not die. Oh, Lord. Live and not die. See, Elder, the enemy would have loved to have taken you out yesterday. <laughs> but it can't touch you. Do you hear me? Uh, uh, who, who knows? Maybe if you would have acted out of character, things could have went a whole lot differently. You hear me? The situation would have hit, went differently. But because you have the Holy Spirit sustaining you, this is why it's important that the Holy Spirit governs your life, that the Holy Spirit sustain you because he'll tell you when to shut up or won't allow you to speak at all. So he'll let you know when to respond and when not to respond. That's why I don't get into uh, uh, these social media, media fe uh, feuds that people have. You don't have to comment on stuff. People don't like you. Oh, well. People don't follow you. Oh, well. People don't like what you got to say. Oh, well. I don't have time to build up with all this foolishness on social media and all these different views and debates. You can't debate and experience. I know who God is in my life. I don't care what you got to say about what you think I believe. I know what he's done in my life. I know what he is doing in my life. I know where he is taking me in my life. And you have to know that same thing for yourself and not allow people to dictate where you're going. How you going to be how you going to come out who, who, who you going to become in life be who God wants you to be stretch out in him and I don't care what they got to say about me Amen. Yeah, I don't care what they say about me and many of you care too much about what everybody else has to say about you. And so when people say stuff about you that you don't like that they, what they say, you get angry. You start acting out of character and you get discouraged and you have start having low self-esteem. I don't care if you like the way I look or not. I don't care if I'm too fat or too skinny. I'm just the way that I want to be and God loves me where I am. Y'all got it? <laughs> Hollywood show y'all the skinny people. Right. Y'all hear me? Yeah. They just recently started showing some plus size people. But I'm telling you, just be who God wants you to be. Yeah. Big, skinny, in between, round, square. I don't care. Be who God wants you to be and be the best you you can be and take God with you. God doesn't care about you being big, square, skinny. All he care is that you, as a square person, skinny person, round person, love him. And if you love him, he got your back, baby. I'm telling you, he got your back. And then you can really say that sticks and stones may break my bones, but your words will never hurt me. <laughs> Why? Because I have the word of God that trumps your words over my life. 
And, and when, I, when I know his word more than your word, you can continue to speak whatever you want to speak. But I'm continuing to know what God's word says about me. I am the beloved of God. I am cherished by God. I am special to God. I am a peculiar person. I'm a royal priest. <laughs> you hear me? I'm anointed by God. I'm anointed and appointed. I'm too blessed to be stressed. Y'all understand what I'm saying? You're going to start speaking stuff over your life that trumps what everybody else is speaking that has cursed your life. Yes. I didn't mean to go this route, but I did. The Holy Spirit knew. But I, but I wanted to do something different. How much time we got? We got two hours. Amen. <laughs> I want to do something different. I asked my wife and I asked someone else this morning. I want her to come and share with you her experience of depression many years ago. So, sweetheart, when, when I read this scripture to you, I want you to tell me where does the scripture take you? What does the scripture mean to you? Okay? Um, it's, it's Psalm 63. Oh God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My body longs for you. In a dry and weary land where there is no water. So when, when I read that, what, what does that scripture take you back to? Where does it take you? It's okay. Okay, so it took me back to years and years ago. Um, that's a scripture that I read every single day for, I don't know, it was a long time, but I read that scripture every single day, years and years ago when kids were little. Nisha wasn't born, wasn't even thought about yet. But um, at the time, during that time in my life, and, and I didn't know that it was depression. People didn't talk about that, so I didn't really know that I was going through that stage in my life. I just know that I didn't like where I was and you know emotionally and f mentally and I knew that there had to be more to God than me going through what I was going through and I found a scripture that spoke to me that said God you're my God you know you know everything about me I'm seeking you earnestly with all of my heart and everything that's in me I need you to deliver me and every day, I read that scripture, literally, every day. And I knew that God had to do something. He had to deliver me and set me free. And I wouldn't give up. I didn't give up because God, if God was the God who he said he was, I knew that it was impossible for him not to do anything, for him not to see me through what I was going through. And so I sought God. Every day I prayed and I and I and I and I read that scripture faithfully like faithfully and I just knew that I wanted out of the situation that I was in out of that that state out of that place that I was in and I remember one day walking down the stairs and I remember Satan showing me a bottle of pills on the table and he said and the the pills weren't there but he showed me he took me there. He showed me a bottle of pills and he told me, he said, you're going to swallow that whole bottle. And when your husband comes on home, he's going to find you dead on the couch. And I, and I spoke to the, to the enemy that time. I said, you're a lie. You're not going to take my life. And I'm not going to give you my life. And I, I, I spoke to him and I, I cast him down. And needless to say, I'm here and I, that didn't happen. And I remember, you know, I remember God reassured me. And I laid on the couch one day and God reassured me and he took me into a place where he showed me myself laying in his arms like a baby and he rocking me and he rocked me and he rocked me and literally I felt him rocking me, rocking me and God just let me know that he would take care of me and he did and the more I read that scripture the more free I became and I, every day I read that scripture, every day I met him in his presence and he freed me every day bit by bit and so I, I say that testimony to, to tell you don't give up, see God's face study his word daily, bit by bit God will bring you out, he will deliver you and set you free and you won't have to go back there, amen, you won't go back I've never been back to that place in my life. 
I've never been back since the day he delivered me. God is a deliverer and he will set you free. And the Bible says when he sets you free, you're free indeed. Amen. Amen. I was free and I was set free that day and I'm free and free indeed. Amen. 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 So do you do you know what caused you to get to that place? I don't. Yeah. I really don't. I, I don't really know. Like I said, I, I, I didn't even recognize I was there. Like I just felt sad and I felt like I didn't really have a purpose. I didn't know where I was going, you know, where I was headed in my life. And um, and I just felt like like I wanted to contribute and didn't know how to contribute in our lives. And, you know, I just I don't know how I got there. I just knew that God had something better for me. I don't know how I knew, but I knew. I just knew that God had something better for me, and I knew this wasn't the life that he had for me, yeah. that God had a better life, and, and it wasn't meant for me to feel the way I was feeling every day. And so, and it, it wasn't, I was grateful for my family, needless to, I, I don't, I don't want to negate that. Mm -hmm. Like, I really was grateful for my family, but something was empty or missing mm -hmm. in my life at the time and I just didn't know what that was and I didn't I didn't really have thoughts of suicide but Satan tried to tell me that I was going to kill myself mm -hmm. and 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 he and to, for him to show me he showed me like he laid it out I had a glass coffee table and he had that bottle of pills sitting right there on that table when I was walking I was literally going through this I was really walking down the steps mm -hmm. and he took me like into this vision and I and showed me that bottle of pills and he said you're gonna take that bottle of pills and you're gonna lay on that couch and you're gonna die and your husband's gonna come home and find you dead and I said you're a lie hmm. you're a lie that's not the plans that God has for me and I read that scripture every single day you have to find scripture that will talk to you that will speak to you to that will speak to where you are and it, it doesn't have to be Psalm 63 it could be something else but you find your place in the Word of God and you talk to God you say God this is what your word says and your word is yes and amen and you said that you would never leave us or forsake us and that your word will come to pass your word is true it is active it is living it is live within me so if that's what that means you come and you come and take control because I don't have any control over me right now I don't have any control over this situation I need you to set me free and that's what you tell God and God will come because it is impossible to serve a God and to speak to a God and ask of a God who lives a man who lives and who is alive in this earth it is impossible to ask him to do something amen. and he not do it amen, amen. that's what it's worth saying it is impossible and he will come he may not come today but he will will come so just trust and believe he will come and you stay in his word you you stay you live according to that promise because that word is a promise and it is active and alive in this earth so it is a promise that God will do what he said he will do he said he's not a man that he should lie Amen. nor the son of man that he might repent if he said it he spoke it he will perform it Glory. so he will set you free he will set you free amen amen, amen. let's give God a praise how many years ago was that? You recall? My kid, Sean and Maya were in elementary and Nisha wasn't born yet. So it it was um I don't know, it was it was probably maybe two years, three years before Nisha was born. Okay. So it was in fact it was our first year living in Mallard's Landing. Mm. So you were you said two years before Nisha was born. Mm -hmm. And it, it, listen, and it, it started before we moved to Mallard's Landing. It started when we lived in, in our first apartment mm -hmm. in Capitol Park. And then that's when God gave me that scripture, Psalm 63. And so I read that scripture for probably two years. Mm -hmm. Probably about two years. And God, he delivered me and he bought me out. But it takes consistency. You can't give up on God. You can't because he won't give up on you. You you have to be consistent. It's about how bad do you want it. Yes. It really is. You have to. How determined are you to be free from from the, from those grips? So it took about two years mm. to for me to fully be free. Mm. Fully, he would like I would make progress, progress, and you know. But I think it really took about two years. Wow. Two years. So it wasn't instantaneously. It wasn't. Instantaneous. You can hold on to that. I got. Um, Wow. All right. Good God praise, guys. I'll come back in a moment. 
Minister Markeisha, how are you today? Um, I'm blessed to be in the house of the Lord on today. Um, Today's your birthday, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> Give her a shout out, y'all. So let me, because I know you're about to run, so let me, let me do this. I'm going to read this to you. You tell me what this means to you. Where, this plate, where does this take you? Psalms 27, the Lord is the light, is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life, and whom shall I be afraid? When evil men advance against me to devour my flesh, when my enemies and my foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war breaks out against me, even then will I be confident. One thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord forever, all the days of my life. What does that scripture, those scriptures, or this entire chapter really mean to you? Well, the last verse is just that I dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And that's why I don't take this day lightly, that I get to be in this house on my birthday. Because one day I didn't think I would make it to this age. In fact, I didn't think I would even make it to my 18th birthday because throughout my teenage years, I didn't know who I was. I tried to seek it in different people and friendships and relationships. And in that, they didn't, in return, love me the way that I loved them. And in fact, some of them even tried to tear me down all the more. And I know that many try to find themselves in other people, but truly you can only find yourself in God. Right. And I truly had to get to that place where I would sit in my room and I pray and I pray for hours and read his word and just get lost in him. Because even in those times, the enemy was still trying to attack my mind and try to allow me to take my life. But... God just, I won't say that it was instantaneous that I overcame depression or I got better because I, I too had a vision of me laying on my bed and my life was gone from my body. And I saw the image of my mother and my father pass my room as they saw me laying there. And I knew it was just the enemy trying to show me what my future could be. But God had greater plans for me. And I also remember a time, I wouldn't say that I was suicidal, but when you're in that place of depression, the enemy will try to put things and thoughts into your mind. And so I had just had surgery, and I had a bottle of pills laying next to me, and it just kept going through in my mind, just take them, just take them, and it'll all be done. But I never touched them because I knew that there was something greater. And so before I turned the age of 18, I, I remember I was sitting in the sanctuary and I felt like I had nothing else to give. I just truly felt like this would be the last moment even though I sat in the presence of the Lord, I still felt empty because I wasn't bold enough to say that there was something wrong with me. And I say to you, it's okay to say I'm not okay. Amen. It's okay to say I'm feeling some type of way that I can't explain because we need that help. But thankfully, my aunt, she saw me laying across the pew and she said, no, devil, you won't have her today. Mm -hmm. This isn't going to happen today. And she pulled me to the altar and the Lord began to fill me with this Holy Spirit. And he began to bring back those thoughts and say, this is not you. He began to show me those people that tried to tear me down. And then he showed me before a group of people and he said this is who you are this these are the people that your life will impact and I didn't see their faces but it was many people that he showed me mm -hmm. and from there I still dealt with it it didn't instantaneously go away 
the enemy would try to come into my room and place thoughts into my head. And I remember sitting on the ground and I began to pray and war in the Holy Spirit and tell the devil, you can't have my life mm -hmm. because I know who I serve. I know that he has a greater purpose for my life. And I, I don't take it lightly that God took me through that process because I feel that it has taught me how to fight. Even when life continues to throw challenges my way, I still continue to fight because I know that there is a greater purpose for me. Mm -hmm. And I just encourage you that if you are going through that, it's okay to say, you know, I'm dealing with this thing, but I'm going to overcome it. I'm going to get better. I'm going to become something and be something great for God because there there are people that you too have to impact and God is still showing me that there is a greater chapter even now mm -hmm. you know that happened about 10 years ago but God is still showing me so much more of myself each and every year that I get older mm -hmm. and I'm just truly grateful for it I again I don't take it lightly I thank him for life. I thank him for showing me the purpose of life. Because sometimes we can get caught up in the cycle of seeming like things won't change. But they do get better. They do get better. So that was, give her a hand guys. So that was about, did you say about 10 years ago? Yes. How old are you today? I'm 27 today. 27. She didn't think she would live to see 18. Um, and she's 27 today. So let me ask you this question. What are you, how are you today though? How are you today? I'm better today. I admit that sometimes I do have struggles in life. Um, thoughts oftentimes try to consume me, but mm -hmm. I know my God. I know he's faithful and just, um, like the song, it says, um, I thought by now these walls would fall. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I feel that spirit trying to come back on me. Mm -hmm. But I know that God is so much greater. Um, and he's shown me all the more who I am in him. Mm -hmm. It's just truly about seeking his face each and every day and not getting lost um, in our ways or in our thoughts. But to know that God has a greater purpose. Mm -hmm. How are you today, honey? Yes, you are. Amen. Uh, I just, um, for me, when God. Talk to my phone. Oh, um, for me, when God delivered me, um, even though it was a process of two years or so, um, He brought me out, and I haven't been back. Um, just because I know what God's word says. And even when sometimes, like, we're facing a lot of things, you know, or just, you know, when like we feel like our purposes aren't coming to fruition um, and we're not actually working fully in our, our, our um, you know, what we're called to do. I, I still remember that God has a plan mm -hmm. and the plan, every plan has its time and Amen. it isn't always. Every plan has its time. Every plan has its time. Amen. And I, I even though we think things should happen in a certain amount of time or whatever and it seems like we keep keep hitting roadblocks you know as tough as it is I do still know that God has a plan mm -hmm. um, let me ask you a question and either one of you can answer first what are you most proud of in your life right now I know you have a relationship with God that trumps everything else but but what would you say you are most proud of right now well I would say my family because if I would have gave up I would have never got to see my children and see how they grow and be able to pour into them and show them love so that they don't have to experience what I've experienced and just having someone that cares for me, my husband, just having him in my life to be supportive and to surround me with love and just help keep pushing me to be who God wants me to be. I'm very happy about that. What about you, honey? There's one thing. Whatever you want to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, um, I'm I'm most proud, and not that it's of any, you know, of my own doing, but I'm most proud that I didn't give up, mm-hmm. and that I still serve God today for real. Like I and I don't have any desires to do th- to do anything else but serve Him, and and for that. It just, it, I'm grateful because I'm able to teach my family and live a life um, for God the best I can for my children and to be the wife that um, God wants me to be to my husband. Let's give my hand, guys. So, how important. I know you guys already touched a little bit on this. But how important is God's word as you're going through, or as you went through and going through even different situations now, but how important is God's word in these moments? Well, I'm a person that believes that words are extremely powerful, especially the word of God. I feel like it shapes our lives. So to have his word is life. It's light light in the darkest of times. And I truly do not know where I would be without his word. And just continuing to show me his promises, his blessings, and what life means, I... I can't express how much his word has meant to me and just spending time in it and growing in him. It's blessed me so much. And um, God's word to me is a mirror. It's a mirror of what God says we are and what we can be and who we can become. And I think it's very important to know God's word because if you don't know his word, then you don't know what you can be or who you can become you don't know that your life is valuable Mm -hmm. you don't know that you don't have to live your life by looking at somebody else Uh, the uh, the problem with our our society is that you know social media is so popular that people define themselves through social media Mm -hmm. and what they see and they don't realize that most of what you see on social media is fake it's not real life they put on there what they want you to see it's not real and too many people define their lives based on what they see on social media and they don't see the full picture they only see what people really really truly want you to see and you have to you have to get into God's word to really know who you are who you're supposed to be who you're supposed to become and God's plan for you if not you'll you'll judge yourself based on somebody else's life that's probably fake or partially true or you know that you're only seeing part of the picture of you know yes you look she looks happy on Facebook or he looks happy on Facebook but he's dying on the inside Mm -hmm. you know you don't know and so that's why I think it's so important that you recognize Facebook as or or you or Facebook or any form of social media just a way of kind of to keep in touch not really something that you should be on every day all day all the time mm-hmm. because then you're you're feeling hopeless about yourself and everybody's progressing and this person's got married this person isn't and mm-hmm. so on and so forth and then you think oh gosh where's my husband oh gosh where's my wife oh gosh where's my career oh gosh is there you know? something wrong with and, me yeah is there something <laughs> wrong with me and so it's so important that we know God's word because God's word really truly tells us who we should be and who we are and our value. Mm. Let's give my hand, guys.